Hello, I'm Brian Warren. We're here at Meridian Community College in the Gene Haas Advanced Manufacturing Center. We're partnering up with Practical Machinists to bring monthly educational videos. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and if you have anything you'd like to see us do in the future, be sure to post it in the comments. All right, today guys, we're gonna take a G13 cycle straight out of the Haas manual. And we're gonna run it on a piece of four by four, half inch thick, 6061 aluminum. Uh, G13 is a counterclockwise pocket mill, which on the CNC, having horsepower, you always wanna do G13. A G12 would be a pocket mill also, but that's gonna cut clockwise and it's rarely done on the CNC. Okay, Jody, so we want to go with program 60. We're going to edit this out. So you want to go into your edit mode and get ready to just call our tool change. So we're going to go with T8 on this, which is a three flute ZR encoded half inch AccuPro in mill. So then from there, we want, to, we want to call up our tool to position because when we do a G13, we have to start in the center of our pocket. So we're gonna put the origin of this part in the dead center. So we're gonna to move to X0, Y0 and reference our G54 and absolute. So we're G00, G90 for absolute, G54 for our work coordinates, and then our coordinates are X0 point and Y0 point. Then from there, we're going to set a speed for this tool. So we're gonna go with 4600 RPM in a clockwise direction, M3. And then the most important part we always have to do when we do a tool change or tool call up is set our height to read the height. So we're gonna go with G43, H8, because our tool numbers and the height numbers always have to match. We're gonna Z down to 0 0.1, and we're gonna cut flood cooling on with M8. All right, then from there, we're ready to start our G13. We're gonna do this in incremental loops. It's gonna, it's gonna run through the part, it's a half inch thick, we're starting 100 above it, so we have to account for that. So if we went 600 depth, we should be able to get all the way through it. We, but we don't wanna do 600 at one time because of the nature of a G13. When you do just a plain G13 like this, our plunge rate and our radial milling rate are going to be the same. So we don't want a full engagement of this tool. So we're gonna to start out by putting G13. We're gonna put our control in incremental position. So we're gonna to go to G91. We're gonna put a Z depth of negative 0.2. Our inner circle is going to be I.3, which is gonna be the radius of the first circle that the ML cuts. Then we're gonna go with our finish circle with a K, with a K value, we're gonna go K.6 to have a 1.2 diameter. Our step over is Q. We're gonna do a 60% step over of 0.3. It's very, very important to give it to D always, so we're gonna go D8, because if we do not register the diameter offset, it's gonna cut off the tool center line, and our pocket's not gonna come out right. All right, so we're going down a total of, of 600, how, how many loops do we need to make to get that at our depth? Three. Three, so we're gonna put in an L3 after the D. And we're gonna plunge and feed this, because we gotta find a happy medium, we're gonna plunge and feed it around 27 inches a minute. So F27 point. All right, that's the end of that block. Our G13 is ready to go, so it's gonna loop that three times and cut. So after that, we need to Z up. So we're going to go back to, to end rapid, G00. We're going to go with G90 to put our control back in absolute mode. We're going to take Z up one inch above the part and cut our cooling off, M9. Okay, after that, we're going to do what we always do here. We don't use G28, we like to use G53 because it gives us control of a single axis. So we're gonna go with our G00, G53, Z0 point. That's going to reference your machine coordinates and it's gonna take your spindle home. And then we're gonna go with G00, G53, Y0 point. 
And that's going to bring the table to the, to the door for us. Because this is a VF4SS. It's quite a large machine. And we don't want to have to reach into the machine to get the part out. And then we're going to end the program with the M30. All right. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and reset our program. And let's go into graphics and let's see if it works. So we're going to F2, we're going to zoom that in a little bit. So we can see it better. And he's doing that by hitting F2 and scrolling. Okay, now let's run it again. So it's a very simple procedure. It's just boring a pocket through there. Program ran, no alarms, but that doesn't mean there's no crashes. That just means everything in the program is good. But we're going to still run it down as we're going to run down slow and 25% rapid anytime we run something the first time. Okay. okay, Jody, now we need to probe in a part. So we're going to call up T30. That's where our probe is for. Well, that's not the probe. There it is. It, it is that because we have a uh, four-inch space mill in there, so it has to leave two pockets empty to it. So can it just switch to there? It had to go put that tool up, then go get the probe. Safety. All right, All right. so we're going to go ahead and jog into position. We want to be about a quarter inch above the part in the middle of it. Don't forget, when you get close, you want to slow your feet down so you don't crash your stylus into the part. It's not fun for any of us. Center, we want to go to our offsets. We want the cursor over to work. Go down to G54 and hit F3 for probe action. This particular one, we're going to do a rectangle block. So when it, what it asks you for here is your X and Y. That's just your block size. So it's a four by four. Now your Z is going to be a negative value, and what you have to tell it is how far does it have to go to actually <coughs> touch the side of the word. So you have to account for how high you are above the part, and then that's a 200,000th tip on that stylus. So we got to get down to get the full sphere of that. So I would say probably a half inch would get it. Okay. We can, so we can uh, run, run this cycle in MDI by hitting cycle start. Okay, now we want to go back to our G54 offsets and we want to set our, our Z height by going to single surface. We're only going to enter a value in Z. And we just want Z to go down just enough to touch the top. A quarter inch to do it. Let's run this program in cycle start. Safely jog away. Make sure you're going in the right direction before you speed up. And we're ready for the program.
Okay, Jody, now that we've got our, our pocket cut in, we now know G13 is the most efficient way to do this. Uh, come on, man. Point. All right. Zane, no, it's not the most efficient way to do it. Oh, uh, okay. The most efficient way to do it would be with software. Uh, there are many different types of software. We've got Mastercam, Fusion, Featurecam, Gilb, the list goes on and on. All of them are good. They all have the pros and cons, but let's take a look at if we cut this same pocket using software to program it, the difference in the cutting speeds. We're going to be able to control our plunge rate and be able to speed up when we get to the actual circular milling. Alright. Is it ready to go? It's ready to go. Here we go. I'd say that's a lot better than what, what we did before. Around the 2013-14 school year is when this program really started to change. Um, and at that point, we decided to, to kind of go further than what the state curriculum is, is has included. I, I put together a three-inch binder full of what I what I thought that everything should, that everybody should know for, for CNC machining and programming. I did this through my own experience, through work, talking with industry professionals and, and evaluating my graduates and just you know asking the industry how, how they're doing. So I put together this binder, we started going through the binder and we took programming to the next level. Uh, that's what really made the difference for us in Skills USA is not only did our students know how to operate the machines and use, use various CAM software, but they actually knew how to program complex parts by hand. And, and every year we just took it further and further. Uh, we, we would take what worked that year and we would keep it and what didn't work, we would scrap it and we would come up with a better project for next time or a better way of teaching it. And it's just a state of constant improvement. We never do the same thing twice, year after year. Every year we try to get better than we were the year before. I always tell everybody that you know that, that, that this place is something where excellence is an expectation. Um, we we want to outdo what we did the year before. There's a real competitive spirit between the students. Um, it's, it's friendly competition, but every class wants to be better than the last class. And 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 as long as we can keep that going, I see no glass ceiling for this program that we can't break through. <laughs>